I'm going to show you how to wire up an existing web application with the Ignite UI controls to add more features and functionality for your users and of course deliver a great user experience. So let's get started. I have Visual Studio open. Of course, you can use any editor when you're building out an Ignite UI project. It can be Visual Studio, Sublime, Notepad++, whatever you prefer. Today we're going to be working with HTML. I'm going to go to File, New. Let's do a new project. I want to do an ASP.NET web application. I'm going to create an empty web application. The first thing I'm going to do is right click and I'm going to add an HTML file. Let's add an HTML page. We'll just call it default. And there's our default page. What I'm going to do is drag an existing HTML table that I've created from my toolbox. You can see that all we have is a table head and a bunch of table rows. And this is data that comes in from the Northwind database. In other videos, we'll show you how to bind REST services, XML, etc. Because you probably already have HTML in your pages, this is just to show you how any existing page can take advantage of the features and capability of Ignite UI. What we want to do is make this page look awesome. Let me go ahead and save it, and let's view it in Google Chrome. You can see here that we have our HTML table. It's functional, but it's not awesome. Let's go ahead and make this awesome. The first thing I want to do is add Ignite UI script references to this page. We can do that in multiple ways. We can use new get to update our web application to get those script references. We can pull them from the toolbox. You can see I have some links here in the toolbox that I can just drag over, like my Ignite references. But the point is, how did I get them? Well, everything that you need to get started is at IgniteUI.com. So you're just starting out on a new project. You're not used to using the Ignite UI controls. You don't have anything set up. No problem. Just go to IgniteUI.com. There you'll find everything you need. Not only do we have samples for every control with showcase samples and reference apps, but we have source code for everything as well. For example, I can click into the data grid here. This will show an overview of data binding in the data grid. And if I scroll down, I can look at the HTML, the CSS, or the full page. Then in the full page code, I can see all of the script references. What's nice is that you don't need to install anything. Everything is pointing to the Infragistics Global CDN. We host these files for you and allow you to use Ignite UI. You don't actually have to save anything on your computer. You don't have to add any folders or files. So all I did was simply copy this and paste it into my project. And that's what we have here. These are all the script references I need. The next thing I need to do is add the Ignite grid to this page, which is also pretty simple to do. Again, using the same method, I can copy it from the Ignite UI page, or I can type in what I want. If I want to use the grid, the tree, etc. Or we actually have a really neat tool that can help you get started, and that's called the Control Configurator. So now I'll show you that Control Configurator. Up at labs.infragistics.com slash jQuery slash configure, which of course this is linked off the Ignite UI homepage as well, you can have an interactive design experience for the controls. When you're just getting started and you're unfamiliar with the properties or how to use the controls, this is where to go. What I want to do here is grab the grid. After I've selected it, I have a nice Visual Studio-like property editor on the right-hand side. So all I need to do now is go ahead and add some capabilities to this grid. To do that with Ignite UI, you add features. So I'll click the feature editor, and all I have to do is simply click on the things that I want to include. Here, I want to make sure we allow filtering. I want to allow cell merging. I want to allow paging. When paging shows up, I want to edit the properties for this. I want to set my page size property to 10, so let's go ahead and do that. Now we'll scroll down and you'll see we have a bunch of other features on this as well. I'll click the back button and we'll allow sorting too. And that's it, that's all I want to do. So now that I have this grid displayed, what can I do with it? I'm just going to click source and you can see that we've spit out all the JavaScript that you will need to add this to your page. So what I'm going to do is copy the grid definition here and paste this right onto our page. 
Here we have the script block that's added and we're actually adding the IG grid with a few features to the page. So the syntax is such where if you just want the grid with no features, this is all you have to add to your page. I add a function which looks for a specific ID. In this case, because we use the configurator, it's looking for placeholder. But what we want to do is tell it to look for a customer's table because that's the ID of our table down here. jQuery will look for this and bind the IG grid component, which you're getting from the Infragistics jQuery script references, and we'll light up this table. So let's do that. Let's hit save, and I'll run this in Chrome now. Let's view this in your browser again. You can see now we have a beautifully styled table. I have row hovering, but there's no features, no sorting, there's nothing like that. So let's go ahead and add those features to the grid. We can go into our control configurator again. I left that up. Let's grab our features and put them back into our page just by pasting. So now I'm going to have filtering, cell merging, and paging. My page size is going to be 10 and I'm also going to have sorting. So let's save this, view this in the browser, and like magic, I have a beautiful looking grid that has paging, it has sorting, and you'll even notice the sorting highlighted the row. It also merged like cells. That's the cell merging feature. Very cool, very useful. So now I'm going to have filtering, cell merging, and paging. I can show a certain number of records per page. Even cooler, I can filter this out. Let's say I want everything that starts with marketing and it just filters the grid all of this with literally five lines of JavaScript. So there you go. In no time, you've taken a simple HTML table and you've made it extremely useful to your end users with all kinds of interactivity and functionality, and you're delivering a great user experience. So that's what's in development. We'll see you next time.